Okay, we are recording. Hi, everybody. I'm Colin Lamb, aka the Tone Wizard, and uh, welcome to It's a Panel Show. Uh, we're going to be t- on episode two. We're going to be talking about the fish festivals. Uh, first of all, I hope that you're very well wherever you may be. And uh, before we get started, I just want to thank some new subscribers to the channel: Durbert, Dur- Darvin Logan, Jeremy Berger. <laughs> Jose Lipton, I, I I wrote these so horribly, I'm butchering them, but that that's just how it goes here. Jason Murphy, Ger Arg, I didn't fuck that name up. Grunge Truck, very cool username, and Ufree. Thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, please feel free to uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel and check out some of the other stuff I've been doing on the channel. Got a show about fish. I've got a show about Ween. I got a show about trying to get into Frank Zappa and lots of other cool crap. So check that out. Now, I just want to say welcome to the guests of this panel show. Uh, in the panel beside me, we've got Derek. Below Derek, we've got Eric. And a name that doesn't rhyme with either of those names. Underneath my panel here, we have uh, David. Derek's joining us from Oregon. Uh, Eric's joining me from North Vancouver. He has more money than I do. And uh, David is joining us from New York. Guys, how are you doing? Good. Doing well. How are you? Oh, fantastic, man. I got water going. Um, I don't know what you guys have been doing with your free time, but last night I had a fifth can of beer and it took me over the fucking edge. It, I didn't read the can. It's like 11%. And uh, <laughs> that'll do uh, it. Yeah. I, I had a very sad morning cleaning my bathroom and trying to get all the bleach fumes to make me come around here. But here I am. So I'm glad you made it. Yeah, I, I made it. Yeah. <laughs> So what we're going to be talking about today, and that's the point where I'm going to hopefully stop talking so much, is we're going to talk about the fish uh, festivals here. And it's just kind of an open thing. I am going to put up a link to a very cool uh, site that I found. Maybe I can screen share this so that you guys can. Oh, I won't do that now, but it's it's a, it's a guide to the first 10 fish festivals. And it's been very useful to me as a guy who doesn't know what the hell was going on there. But uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Eric, you were at some of the early festivals, right? Yeah, 98 was Lemon Wheel. That was the third one. Yep. And um, the year for that was um, Camp Oswego in New York. And that yep. was the fourth one. So those are both in the late 90s. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I, I just had some questions right off the bat. So how old would you have been at, at the first going out to that first one? Um, I was in third year university as I was 21 yep. in 98 and 22 in 99. Yeah. And were, were you already a big, big fan at that point? Or? Um, yeah, because I got introduced in first year university um, yep. in Ontario. Yeah. I'd been down to Lake Placid in 95 for my first show. Yeah. Um, that summer, I went to the Gorge as well when I was in Vancouver oh, and um, in 98. And then we went decided to go to uh, Campus Fuego. Okay. Oh, sorry, we went to Lemon Wheel. And we, we drove through Canada, so through Quebec, through New Brunswick, and then down into Maine. Um, mm-hmm. It was way in the top of Maine uh, for this, uh, the Volney Airport. Yeah. So you get down. So what, what does that look like? You're, you're 21 years old. This is 1998. And do you remember how much that cost? The ticket price? No, I don't remember. Yeah. So I haven't <laughs> done that before, I think. But I don't remember the actual cost. Of the post. Yeah. So you're going down there with a group of friends then, was it? Yeah. Yeah. I drove my, my old Subaru, 85 Subaru with uh, two other friends. Yeah. Um, crossed the border, this tiny little border crossing that doesn't get much action. Yeah, and, and then went to the Loring Air Force Base in upstate uh, Maine. Okay, yeah, I'm just I got the information about that one up here. That sorry, that was the Lemon Wheel one, right? That was Lemon Wheel. Yeah. Okay. What What are you? What are your first impressions of, of going? To, obviously, I think you said you've been to a fish show before that, but what was your first impressions of getting? Well, yeah, festival? the show was at this old Air Force Base. I don't yeah. think it was even working anymore, but it was like a defunct Air Force Base. So, basically, it's just thousands and thousands of people camping between the tarmacs or on the tarmac and it was just, it was massive in scale yeah um and probably i you know been to little local festivals at thunderbird stadium here you know like la palooza before but like it was such a huge stage and stuff and it, it was just uh the scale was pretty was pretty pretty crazy yeah as a as a 21 year old going down there were there were there, was there anything that 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 maybe you hadn't seen before going on at a at a festival like that or i, I don't know where you were at prior to that but any anything that you were like oh well, this is interesting kind of i mean i don't think i had ever been to like a camping festival right where you're camping yeah. on right like i've been to day festivals before but nothing where you had you were staying there for the whole weekend um I mean, the gorge is a bit like that, I guess, too, right? Yeah. But that was yeah. that was new to me that summer as well, because yeah. uh, the gorge is like because you do camp close to the theater as well, the amphitheater. It's sort of similar, but this was like everyone just being there for 
one thing for the whole weekend did seeing you know three sets a day so it was pretty yeah neat. What, what any any comments on the party and stuff going on there? And the I mean, the party was wild. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, that was the first year they did. They had this giant uh, elephant that they launched off from the from behind this this, 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 this the uh, yeah the stage, and then they played baby elephant walk. So it was just, it was just all nutty for that. So yeah. it was, and then they also did like an ambient jam that night where they basically improvised for an hour and um, you know in front of thousands and thousands of people just doing a, like an hour long total improvised set. So that was uh, another. Th I've never seen anything like that before, and really even since, like for that for that kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, I've never seen anything about that. Uh, do you, do you, Derek and uh, Dave? Do you have any comments about shows around that era or, or about that festival at all? Or I, I don't necessarily. I mean, the uh, first one I went to was in two thousand four. It was my only festival, and I didn't have any relation, but I could speak to the scope of it. Um, I, I went to Coventry and I think you said you did too, Eric. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the scale of what they would put on for those long weekends is just mind blowing if you've never been to something like that before. Yeah. I mean, it's like you said, the same type of thing that you would expect like at Coachella or, you know, Bonnaroo or something. And it's just one band and, you know, almost 100,000 people that are there to see one band for a weekend and have a great time. It's, it's just a really cool experience. Yeah, I think yeah. I I read an article um about about like it was like confessions of a of a wife of a fish fan or whatever, and she's <laughs> saying like I had a choice between spending New Year's with my husband, you know, and watching you know a band fly across the stage in a in a hot dog singing a song with Japanese lyrics, or you know spending it at home with my family or whatever. And I I fuck I really wish that I could get to some of these shows. Sorry, David, you were gonna say something. No, yeah. So, right. Magna Ball, the only festival I've been to that was, you have the sheet up, I think 2016, I think that was. It's actually the last one that they had because Curveball was canceled. Yeah. Um, the one that they're supposed to have, I guess that was two years ago now. Yeah. Mag um, Magna Ball 2015, it looks like. 2015. Um, yeah. So, that, so that's the only one I've been to. But again, just kind of parroting what Derek and Eric have said to the you, you, you get there. I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect. So you get there, you're in line in your car, essentially waiting to get in. Um, they probably weren't this strict back. Uh, they're, they're not that strict, but back, back in the, in the nineties, but you get in and security kind of does a quick sweep of your car <laughs> to make sure you're not bringing anything in. And then you, you, they kind of, you know, heard you through and we park somewhere with a bunch of friends yeah. And you don't like really realize until you start walking around. Like, I was like, holy shit, it takes 25 minutes to walk to the stage. And you're just walking through cars at thousands of cars. And then, yeah, it's pretty wild the amount of people that, that, all go just to see this one band yeah that that kind of reminds me the the transit to the stage I, I was at the gorge a couple of years back to see the foo fighters not really a buddy of mine got me a ticket and i mean i was definitely going to go not not really my first choice but i do remember from the gorge after the show they funnel you down like this uh, this little path and you got to get back to the camping area and i was a little banged up and i started making like cattle mooing noises yeah. and some woman was like what you're doing is awful please stop <laughs> and i was like well all right i guess i'm drunk but that that's always uh, that always pops into my mind but uh in terms of the culture like i was trying to gently prod eric into giving me some some sort of gory details on some of the crazy shit going on and now i'm just gonna flat out ask eric without without uh what's the term without without making yourself look bad what's some of the craziest shit you saw at those festivals well, the, the following year um at camp Oswego, which was in upstate new york um but a lot closer. I was in Toronto that summer, so it was only yeah. about a five, six hour drive. So it was much more in reach. Um, it was like 90 to five degrees each day that, that weekend. So it was super hot. Um, I mean, that's, that's, I think, I don't think they had the Ferris wheel. I can't remember if they had the Ferris wheel, lemon wheel, but they definitely had it there. So there's a huge Ferris wheel at the back of the stage, uh, the back of the, the, um, the festival, the, the stage area. Um, I mean, one of the crazy thing was just walking back to camp and passing like dozens and dozens and dozens of tanks of um, nitrous just on the tarmac out in plain sight. So not even yeah. hiding it kind of thing. And then just everyone huffing back balloons and 
and just getting spun after the show. So that that's uh, yeah. I hadn't really seen that before ever. I keep I keep point. hearing about nitrous. Like what well, one of the things from the Ween show. I actually heard that Ween fans at some festival actually kind of took up arms against the nitrous people or whatever. I mean, like I've, I've never really been around nitrous. I've seen it just, just in a very small sort of context. I've been like, Oh, that, that's interesting. Some guy over there is having a great time by himself with a balloon. But uh, would you say that like, I mean, I'll, I'll put this to all three of you guys. Is the nitrous thing prevalent? I don't know if it is anymore, but did you see a lot of that at other fish shows as well? Or Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what what is at least here at least here here in in new york i don't know about other places um yeah i mean we call them the nitrous mafia it's kind of their Mm name um but yeah they're everywhere and it's it's not just fish i go any kind of band in the scene you go to like an umphrey show in brooklyn here you go to go see mo where it's just everywhere and what's Mm -hmm. funny is here in here in in new york literally you're walking out of msg you kind of get out and then they're just all over the place and the cops nypd they're just like standing on the street corner just like hanging out with the guys yeah it's like well, they don't what's, what's the criminal charge for for one I, balloon and once the balloon pops is it evidence anymore like what I, are you really gonna you i know? don't know i yeah. it's, it's it's in a dentist office right yeah it's, right yeah, yeah. It's not I, even like getting it getting a tank of it is the illegal part but you know yeah having a balloon of it is not really any kind of crime I even yeah know. one I, more I, I mean i'm not going to harp on about the nitrous thing but <laughs> I, I just want to know like is is huffing nitrous does that enhance the actual show or does that enhance like you know standing around on the street after or maybe like waiting or like i don't know what the appeal is there i don't either it's so short lived <laughs> too right but yeah it's it's definitely it's it's after the show i mean Oh, it's a little bit before a show too. people going in, but, yeah. but yeah, like Derek said, it's so short lived that it doesn't even, yeah. hmm. I, I, I don't know. I, it's like my least favorite part of any show leaving and just like, I hate the, no, yeah, the noise. And then they pop left and right. And you're like, what? yeah, <laughs> so I, I scurry through there real fast. And yeah, you know, get what? Away. I think, you know, I guess as a recap, I, I got into this band because I knew like a lot of people that I knew, such as Eric, and then other people that I knew kind of in and around the music scene. There's a really strong reaction to Fisher. People fucking love it or they absolutely hate it or they just make fun of it because it's an easy target for them or whatever. But like, I have to go to a show. I want to hear this. I want to hear the chorus of hissing and balloons popping, man. I, <laughs> I really do. So get, getting on to these festivals here, Eric, any, any particular performance? Um, and, and also do you, Dave? and uh and Derek as well any particular performances that stand out in your mind from any of those shows where you're just like that was fucking that was top shelf kind of stuff um well going back to uh lemon wheel that there was uh they played piper and that was new kind of a newer song at that time in 98 and yeah that song just kind of blew my mind just because it, it's just it's more back then they played long pipers they were about t- you know 10 and 12 minutes and stuff so they were a bit longer with a, a slower build up and at that time i was just like this is a cool song because it's it's in a i think it's in like in a, a 12 beat measure so it kind of turns around on itself a lot yeah and it speeds up as the song goes along and and i hadn't heard that i hadn't heard that song before that time so that was a pretty yeah, cool and they, they uh, back then they covered beastie boys sabotage and uh it was uh i mean being a, also being a beastie boys fan it was really cool to see fish cover that and uh when Mike comes in with the the bass drop in, in the middle of that song, that's pretty. It was pretty cool. So those are some standout moments. Hmm. I haven't sure. even heard Piper yet, so that's that's on the list now, man. I, that, I, uh, that's awesome. I was say, Eric, I, I please, I hope they bring back the slow build Piper. It's like mm-hmm. one of my favorite things, and they just, you know, the songs evolve, so they hop right into it now. But <laughs> bring back the slow build. Yeah. Um. Coventry was weird musically. I mean, the whole weekend was real bittersweet for a lot of reasons, but I, I'd say performance wise, the one that still stands out in my memory was the Harry Hood from the first night. I think it was the the encore song. And I mean, it had been building that things were obviously just not right for a lot of different reasons with the band and the festival. Sorry, and, I'm just going to just one sec. So yeah. if I'm not mistaken, I just looked at the timeline of that. Would that kind of intersect with the first kind of breakup of fish? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Go on there. Derek. Or is, yeah. 
maybe want to call them, but it was the end of 2.0. We're going with that. Two foot, right. <laughs> yeah, they they were they said they were just officially done because they had done a hiatus before. Yeah. And that was, you know, known that they were going to come back. But this is the one where they were just like, we're we're done. Like our, our lives are falling apart and we need to just be done for ourselves. And yeah, so I think everybody was there not knowing if they'd come back again. You know, I anyway, without all that, the the hairy hood for me on the first night was just like chaos they had these giant boulders in front of the stage and i remember at one point trey had gone down and he was like standing on top of one of these boulders just like wailing away and it was just you know it wasn't even music anymore it was just like pure emotion coming out of his guitar and um i mean the sec second night was it had its own thing going on but that's the song that stood out for me from Coventry, and i've always just loved hood anyway but just to have the song I love and then have that level of like emotion and having it be the last song of the first night, it was, it was a, a yeah. big one for me. I mean, there's so many, like I've, I haven't even been to a live show or whatever, but that's one thing about like, you know, the, the series is called Getting Into Fish is that I can have moments if I just drop into a show or whatever. I was jogging in the park like uh, maybe a month ago or whatever, and I heard a version of chalk dust torture that I that had like a solo section that just like I was jogging and I'm grossly out of shape and I did like I was doing like a lap and then walking and I was like I can barely even run a lap of this shit or whatever and then the chalk dust torture solo came on I was like <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna jog till the end of this I almost fucking collapsed and died <laughs> but it was it was fucking awesome and I, I'm really glad that I've gotten into fish and I'm glad that I've been able to talk to um, people ab about fish and that's just it's given me so much like what do, what do you guys think in terms of the future of fish you think they'll be doing festivals uh, again in the future maybe or i think I so think we're going to try to make amends for curveball that which was just like a, yeah. a a really really bad luck crazy rainstorm went through uh the area where rockland's going is and uh basically it took out the water system for the whole town and and the, and, mm -hmm. um, the racetrack where, the, where it was yep yeah, the health uh, the authorities shut them down. Had, yeah, the and, and like our, my friends were in our RV heading that way when they heard the news, and they basically had to stop camp. And they yeah. found something else to do that weekend, but you know there were tens of thousands of people that were headed that way. Some were already inside the grounds when mm -hmm. they pulled the on it. And yeah. I mean, the stage was built; they were sound checking. Everything was ready to go. And in the last, you know, during that day, they stopped it. So, um, and that almost happened to Coventry as well because that was sort mm -hmm. of a similar thing. Uh, our hurricane remnants went through the little airport in upstate Vermont where it was and just saturated all the grounds so they really couldn't park cars on the grass so it yeah. was uh that, actually I don't got canceled. I don't mean to interrupt but I, I've been meaning to ask you since we started talking did you actually get to drive in under your own power Eric yeah we, we came from Canada down from um Quebec mm -hmm. We actually rented an RV in Quebec and then drove it down across the border. And I think because we were coming um, from the north, we actually got, and we were there pretty early. They were still playing I think, the show when we were getting in line. Sorry, they were still playing the show the night before in Massachusetts when we were getting in line. Yeah. Um, so it took us 18 hours, but we actually got to drive our RV into the ground and camp on the tarmac at the airport. So we were, we were like not even in the mud. Like it was, we lucked out like crazy. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Was Coventry, sorry, was that the one, did they, did, I was talking to a guy, uh, Eli, who came on the show, and I think he was talking to me about, about Zap or something, but he was talking about Coventry as well. Was that the one that they tried to shut down, but people just kind of showed up and they just, they just did it anyway? People parked inside the highways, people yeah. walk like 20 miles to get in. What about you, Derek? How, did you get inside or, or? I was one of the very last cars that was allowed to drive in. I flew into Burlington from Oregon and uh, I took some back highways up real early, um, I guess the day before, whenever they were opening it up for the first time. And so I didn't get stuck on the interstate mess that whole 20 mile back up. I, I kind of came in and I think it dropped in from the north. And I remember they had us first divert off to the left. There was like this parking lot where they were like, hold on, we're going to put cars in here for a little bit. And I think they were still deciding whether or not to even open the site uh, because of all the mud. And then they, I was there maybe an hour or two. And then all of a sudden, just people were screaming, like, get in your car, they're letting us in. And so I got in and I uh, was parked up in the, the George Stephanopoulos lot. I still remember they had all these like Greek names. Yeah. And it was just like pure mud. I mean, it was like cars stuck up to the middle of their rims in mud. 
And there was maybe like six or eight more cars came in after me. And then all of a sudden they just like stopped coming. And I'm like, well, that's weird. Cause there was all this empty space behind where all the cars were gonna park. And then there were just no more cars. And I, you know, I didn't really know what was going on. And I had the, the radio on, you know, listening to their, they always have a radio station at these events playing like old jams and news and things like that. Bunny. <laughs> the bunny. The bunny, that's right. What, what's the bunny? That's their radio, radio station. station. Oh. Yeah. So many things. So like er, every, everyone, when they're like walking back after the show, everyone's blasting the bunny from their cars or from wherever. Yeah. yeah. Kind of the station of everybody. I, I just pulled up the little note here in this article. Again, I'm going to share a link to this is because it's actually really useful here as you guys are talking. It's getting me caught up to speed. But it's uh, it talks about how, I guess, the a lot of the roads and pathways were destroyed and fish ended up paying for that, which is a very nice gesture. Um, but it says um, at the end there, the performances were very sad and that at certain points they broke down crying during the performances. And uh, it says Paige McConnell teared up during Waiting in the Velvet Sea. What, what do you guys remember about that? Pretty yeah, I mean, there, yeah. Did right you there? cry, Eric? I was just saying, I mean, cry? just pretty much as, I, I didn't cry, but I mean, I, I just remember <laughs> that everybody was just emotional. There were people around me breaking down. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah, there were some good moments of music, but there were some... Uh, some some rough moments as well like both musically and emotionally like from yeah. the band like there were some uh you could argue butchered songs that weekend and you know they were they were emotional they thought that's this is the very end and then because of, of the conditions of the grounds and so many people <laughs> having the you know it wasn't the festival they even wanted you know they dreamed of kind of yeah. thing right was, yeah sounds like the it, culmination and again, the same thing with curveball it was all thought out and all planned so well and they had all this thought into it and then just because of weather, those two times, you know, two out of 11 times, um, yeah. one happened and one didn't, but they, they were both, um, oh. <laughs> some people were arguing when curveball was canceled, is this better or worse than Coventry? Because, you know, yeah, it didn't happen, but, it, you know, the music was so up and down at Coventry. It was like, you know, yeah. it was, but I mean, obviously, there were some great moments there. There were some great songs at Coventry. Yeah. And I, you, I, had, I, I had a good time. So. And like I, I was at the Ween Melt. Were you at the Ween Meltdown show here in Vancouver, Eric, or no? Uh, um, the Queen Elizabeth, two thousand. Yes, I was. For the yeah. Ween and you, yeah. you know that was like that was my first Ween show, and that was gutting. But like, I'm still, I'm still glad that I was there. Like, I'm, you know, like not, yeah. not like. You know, I mean, obviously, I'm just, I'm just like for no reason, just proud that I was there. So I imagine there'd be a, a similar sort of thing with Coventry. Then, from what you're saying, I mean, there's usually way fewer bad shows than good shows, right? So those, yeah. those bad shows are, are, are like kind of in history books, and you remember those sometimes, right? So yeah, yeah. I, I was uh, fascinated with the scale. I mean, we were talking earlier just about the general scale of the event, but then because of the disastrous nature of Coventry, it had its own like special things going on with it like you were talking about the roads and, and paths and things getting washed out and i remember talking to officials while they were bringing in these giant semis full of bark chips to dump into the mud and they'd like dump a semi load of bark chips down and it would just sink into the mud and then they dump another semi load and mm. i think i heard they got like all the bark chips within like the whole new england area that's, were, that's, were diverted to that that's festival a, that's a classic bark mulch conspiracy uh theory right there it was inside <laughs> job man the bark bulk, bark man was was destroying everything classic classic they had uh, i think it was the largest horse patrol in any one place they had like 250 cops on horses and in, in there and there yeah. there's like all these random things that the officials were quoting but all uh, these statistics you'd rather not be you'd rather be not a part of yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting because magna ball right so that was again like you said 2015 surprisingly i mean right nothing really crazy or bad happened that i that i know of but it was surprisingly like you didn't see many security or police. Like it didn't seem like it was that prevalent. Everyone was just there to have a good time and no one bothered anybody. And I don't know, that's kind of interesting. Like, like I've seen the videos and pictures of, and festivals in the past, right. Of, you know, there's historic dead festivals with, you know, some pretty bad kind of police things going on, but kind of interesting that 2015, not, not much of that. Yeah. You know what, it, just from my kind of, 
looking at fish um it's it's generally a pretty chilled time there's generally not like i don't mm-hmm. know what, what is it i've heard about wookies which is something that is, <laughs> i forget about it and then every once in a while i i think about it and i'm like what the fuck is that shit like and when you look into it like on the message boards like on the fish channel some of i've looked at it in other videos the descriptions of these wookies or whatever by all accounts they just seem to be ornery men who don't eat meat <laughs> like is that is that like I'll let what's, someone what's, else explain. <laughs> what's what's the worst? What is the worst? Like worst? What what is an aggressive fish fan? Do they exist, or are they just somebody like actually the Harry Hood from ninety three at Boys State mm. University far surpasses the quality of like is what's the worst fish? To, fan? What's funny to me? The worst fish fan is you go to a show. You're with you know you have four seats. You're with four of your friends in your seats, and then the group next to you that has two seats brings in five of their friends oh. to kind of sit with you. And then it's like, all of a sudden you're like stacked on top of each other. To me, like, that's the worst experience. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and that happens a lot. It's kind of like, yeah, you have your seat, but you kind of go into the venue and sort of go wherever you want. <laughs> yeah. But well, as I, as I get older, I like to kind of have my own, yeah. my own speed in my own space. Yeah. I like to sprawl and spread. That's right. When, <laughs> when I went to the ween reunion, it was just general admission, the entire upper bowl. The first night I tried to get close to the stage, but like, exactly the situation that you described uh, happened and then by the end of it it was a hockey arena so I just went to the back like right at the back the opposite of the stage and I just sat there like sprawled out just like <laughs> covered in potato chips and drinking beer and just cans all over the place it was a great time but actually I do want to touch in the let's, let's talk about these goddamn Wookiees because I, I just want to know if you've seen one in the wild what what's going on there Eric you first me I don't know they're just like hardcore hippies that go to tons of shows and you know might do things for um you know i don't know De- I, haven't, Derek. I haven't had many bad experiences with yeah. Wookiees, but yeah um, <laughs> I've, I've seen them um they i mean i could give a physical description but i i think to tie in with your last question yeah. you know about like what are the bad fans it's the people that aren't there for the music oh, okay you know there's there's a lot of people that you know a whole wide variety of people that go to see a fish concert and then you've got a certain group of people that follow the scene yeah and they're there either to make money or to make something or take advantage or just you know maybe they're just cool people that like to travel around and they don't have the money to get in with a ticket and you know they're there too but there's a lot of people that just are there for the scene mm. and not necessarily for the band if it wasn't fish it would be some other band that they'd be going and hanging around yep. and they just yeah they're just kind of like dedicated to being this like kind of hardcore type of subculture person yeah. and you know if you look at them funny or question them or you know, or just even if you're not exactly like them, they're not always inviting. And, yeah, and cool. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, like I have to say, like in the even in the interactions that I've had on YouTube, like the hundreds of comments and stuff like that, there's never been a from fish fans there's never been like an aggressive like correction or whatever like i do the show on ween there's been like blatantly mean shit of just people who i guess don't approve of me talking about ween or saying anything like remotely negative about about you know gene ween or dean ween or whatever and they'll just type like a torrent of abuse and the zappa fans will like correct any like you know misconstrued you know uh, facts or whatever down to the letter and fish fans have been pretty cool so i cannot on that note wait to get to a fucking show and on that note like for you guys like what do, what do you think do you think 2021 is going to happen for a fish yeah. show yeah i think so I, yeah i'm crossing my fingers because i'm here in new york city but new year's eve for mm. 2021 into 2022 here yeah. here at, at, at msg yeah. So we'll see. I've I've heard rumors. I don't know if there's so many rumors. Whenever you know when tours are going to drop, all there's rumors that fly around. But possibility of of dicks, which is Labor Day here, right yeah. in this day, so September um, yeah. in Colorado. Yeah. So maybe I heard that is like the first kind of viable date, but probably New Year's. Yeah. Is okay. is that a festival or is that just a venue? It's, it's a ve- it's a venue and they play okay, three yeah. shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it, ha- it, much... it... Oh, go on. Go ahead. I was gonna say they pretty much lock that down. It's they said it's one of their favorite venues. I mean, I think MSG is kind of their spiritual home now, 
and dicks at labor day is a guarantee for fish you know usually vegas mm -hmm. is halloween um the gorge is always mid-july uh, they just they have certain things that they've kind of built into their their existence now uh, since they're so well established they can you know get these venues on the dates they want yeah uh, but the last i heard mike say anything was a week or two ago and he was saying you know don't bet on summer tour but maybe later in the year yeah do you do any of you guys well i mean eric you'd probably know this when, when was the last time they came up to canada even um they played uh toronto about five years ago uh, okay and the last time they played vancouver was nine nine ninety nine so uh, 21 years ago. shit so it's not not looking good for a canadian show and i don't know about you eric but i probably won't be going down south um you know any anytime soon so i don't know no, and the, yeah so like summer tour won't happen so no gorge this summer but maybe yeah. for next summer if they you know yeah. that and push that one more time um because now it's been almost three years right since they played there so yeah um mm -hmm. and that's usually where i go i, I go there the most often yeah to see them. So, i was thinking about that as well because that's like that's like eight hour drive, six six hour drive maybe seven oh, it's about five or six yeah, yeah something, something like that. that yeah that's the same from here yeah yeah i'd love to get down there shit yeah and then then i was also gonna say like what we're with all these they say the the 2.0 fans or whatever i like what where are we at now what would be 4.0 like post <laughs> post apocalyptic fucking uh yeah. post pandemic 5.0 or like i think trey has officially started calling it 4.0 he put he an made instagram a, post yeah yeah a little while ago yeah so and i I'm going to ask again, like, am, am I the last guy to pack up his family into the wagon and be like, we're going out West for gold. And then I'm going to like, what's left for me as a, as a new fish fan. What do you think? Everything, everything, <laughs> everything, the whole experience. You got to have it. What, you guys aren't biased in any way, of course. Are you like, yeah, yeah. right <laughs> no, on. They're, I mean, they're, they're playing great. You know, the last, last 10 years have kind of got even progressively better and they, you know, they, they're still really into it. Um, yep. There's still great jams and they still have, you know, they still have a lot of um, energy to keep this thing going, I think for many years to come. So. Yeah. And uh, they, no, so I was just gonna say they keep, I mean, they keep dropping decent music too. Like, so they're not stop. It's not like the only thing they got is the stuff from the nineties. Um, like, I mean, other people might have different opinions, but they're, their Halloween show, uh, I forget what year, but Cosfoot Vox, I thought that was, that, that music was amazing. And that was great stuff that, that they put out. And it was, I don't know, 10 songs deep. And they just keep adding songs here and there and mm -hmm. take them for a ride. <laughs> I'm curious, Colin, have you uh, sat down and had a chance to watch any of their full concerts? Okay. Cause so like I they've been doing this dinner and a movie thing. They got one coming up on Tuesday. I've 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 dipped in quite a bit. Um, I, I should have been keeping better track of what I was listening to. But usually what I tend to do in terms of a whole show is I'll listen to a whole show on Spotify because there's tons of shit on there. But that being said, there's the um, uh, the show. The, it's the first the first festival, I think the one uh, where Clifford it? Ball Clifford Ball. There, there's a DVD for that, right? Oh yeah. And I think mm -hmm. I've watched like I've I've been watching most of that sort of thing. But I will admit that I watch a lot of YouTube when I've you know, I'm kind of done video gaming because I'm I'm drunk and uncoordinated. So they've got the specifics three... of what I've seen are, are a little hazy, but I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they've got yeah. three full concerts on their YouTube channel right now. They've got Riviera yeah. Maya from 2019. Uh, that, that, I, show. that I watched. I watched most of that too. Yeah. 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 And that's kind of, that's the closest. I think that was, no, because I was 2019. I was going to say that's from two years ago, but you know, that's kind of where they're at right now musically and mm -hmm. stage presence wise. And it's a, a good feel for what you'd probably experience and going yeah. to a show soon cool all right i just want to sort of shift gears we're getting uh, around uh, 30 35 minutes here i don't want to uh, put this on too too long here but eric well i got you here um you guys don't know this about eric but he's a he's a bass player of some of some some studious nature and i just wanted to get your opinion on uh on mike's bass playing and what what what's your impression of that is i mean i love mike's playing he's a he's a huge uh um influence on my playing and yeah. slap is his technique is awesome yeah um and it's interesting both him and phil lesh both use picks i'm, I'm a finger player but yeah. and sometimes pick bass players get some flack from, yeah. from other bass players but i mean they both make magic happen with, with, with their picks as well 
Um, so yeah, he's, uh, I've learned a lot from his playing and yeah, he's uh, a real fun bass player too. To I've heard mention. some people say that when they first started out, he wasn't really brought to the forefront. And then in the late nineties, I think they, it's almost like they just turned him up or something like that. Is there anything there? Or? I mean, a little bit. I mean, yeah. as you play bigger and bigger theaters and bigger yeah. sound systems, the bass will kind of gradually get larger as well. And I mean, Do he got a, know? go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm curious. Do you remember the people for a louder mic movement back in the 90s? <laughs> I don't actually, but okay. uh, he definitely has his own fan club within the, the fish fandom kind of thing, right? So um, I have some friends that absolutely love him. And uh, he played Vancouver, right? Three years ago at, yeah. the, at the, um, the Rio Theater um, with his solo project. So that was, a, yeah. that was pretty cool. You were in a, you were, you, were you in a fish tribute years ago? Oh, years ago, like when they were in the hiatus before they came back in yeah. nine, we did a couple of years of, of uh, fish tribute. And stuff. Yeah, so that, what was what was that called? I can't can't remember. Uh, I, I saw it. Like, just from Mars, which is one of their one of their songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I seem to remember. I, I smuggled my young brother, my underage brother, into a show. I if I'm not wrong, it was at the woods. It's like a a private uh, venue yeah. above a tire shop, and we just like yeah. put <laughs> we put a leather jacket on my younger brother, and like you know, we he, we also made him smuggle in a bunch of booze as well, like a total like drug pony or well not drug pony, but a, I guess a liquor mule. We'll we'll there wasn't much call. Him about you, so no, no, but for some That's reason we, we just didn't want to pay for booze. That was the main thing, and he came in and he he was like, "What the fuck is that, man?" And I was like, "Oh, it's it's that's jam band, dude." So yeah, he really enjoyed that but um i also just wanted to say quickly before we go that i've i've kind of been i've become obsessed with trey's uh lead guitar tone i've, I've become absolutely fucking obsessed with it and i'm i'm trying to fit i've been watch the rig rundown which i think has really been the most useful thing but the feedback that he gets from and this is going way off topic but i just wanted to get your guys opinion because david i think you've talked about it before when we were on and uh derek as well but what I've done is I'm using a reverb pedal that has a reverse, um, a little bit of a, a reverse kind of tape echo thing on it. And then I'm using a delay as well. And I watched an interview with Trey and he says that that kind of squeezes the sound. So it's, uh, it's like each note is kind of, this is really stupid stuff, but each note's kind of like, it's kind of like, like it, it explodes a little from the guitar. Like, do you guys have any, have any thoughts on that guitar tone? Cause I'm going after that here. His guitar tone. Yeah. <laughs> I got a tube screamer and a reverb pedal and a compressor and well, a delay. You need two tube screamers. Yeah, that, that's one. Because that gets his yeah. real sustainy sound. You also need yeah. a hollow body. Yeah, don't have like you have because his his sustain is mainly from a hollow body. Okay. You turn up turn up the amp. You have something that's that's braced essentially, completely hollow, and you can just hold a note for hours. It's more um, feedback than sustain. Yeah. Right. It, 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 it's more feed. Right. But that's when, whenever you see him, it shows holding a note for a minute. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of that feedback loop that's yeah. happening. The sustain is fucking amazing. And I, you can use a compressor. Like I have a boss compressor. It actually has a sustain knob. You can get there. But that fucking feedback, the only thing close that I've heard would be like John Frusciante uses like a fuzz tone that he'll just kind of drone using, but it's not as defined. So I'm after that fucking guitar tone. If anybody out there um, watching has, has any recommendations for the guitar tone, please let me know. I might do another show about that where I just go to my studio and try to be Trey without any of the playing ability or access to gear. But I think I'm going to try and put something together there. Well, so, have, have you yeah. checked, sorry, have you checked out Trey's guitar rig.com? Yeah, I, I've been there, but it's just, it's, it's just, it's like a shopping list that I'll never, you know, like, <laughs> I think at the heart of it, it's two tube screamers, one as a boot, as a clean boost and one as a screamer and then some, some kind of delay. And then maybe the reverb or something. I don't know. The compressor is key as well. Yeah. You, you got to have that or it's just not quite Trey. I know he's not using the Ross anymore. I think he says it's a backup, but he still got that as a pretty big part of his chain. Right on. And your well, you amp know, needs to be really loud. Yeah. <laughs> that you know helps. what I would actually love to do? I, I think we're gonna we're gonna cut this episode off here before it gets too long here. And I really appreciate the time uh for you guys stopping by, Eric, especially man. I haven't seen you for some time. So uh missed you and Whistler up there. But um for a future episode, if if you guys would indulge me, Derek 
and uh, and Dave, if maybe if we can just get get our rigs going and try and see who has the best tray tone or something like that, we'll talk about <laughs> that later. But All thank right. you guys very much for uh, for talking to a guy on the internet about, about fish. It's an international panel of guys talking on the internet, and if 2020 taught me anything, is that's basically how all information is going to be exchanged in the future. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Colin. Cool. Thanks. All right. And thank you guys for watching out there. Um, there's like 430 subscribers now. My birthday's coming up in April. If I can get to 500 by April, that, that'd be that'd be fun. But if not, I don't care. I'm going to yes. keep doing these. Thank you very much for watching. If you have anything to say in the comments, please get involved. And if you want to come on the show and talk to a man and possibly some other men about fish or wh whomever you may be, just, just let me know. Get involved. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. And uh, we'll see you in the future. Oh. Oh, shit. <laughs> We're still recording.